Hi, and welcome back. Summer is almost over, but Excel is still here. <laughs> so now let me show you how to do custom threshold highlighting in Excel. And that's a fancy way to say this. Let's highlight all the values down here that are above, below, or equal to a value that I set right here. So this way it's not going to be hard coded. Right now I have everything that is below 2000 highlighted. Let's say I wanted to go with 3000. Go over here and let's say everything greater than 3000. Now that's highlighted. What if we don't want the highlight to be there by default? We can uncheck that guy and it's not going to be there. And this was supposed to be hidden. It's just for helping you do the formula we're going to do in just a moment. So this is what it's actually going to look like when it's in your worksheet. And I'm going to show you how to build it and how to customize it for your own data. So you can have many more comparison operators than this. And it's actually very easy to do. And it only combines a couple tiny little tricks that I'm going to show you here in this tutorial. But if you'd like to learn more about Excel, check out my Excel courses on teachexcel.com. My Excel VBA course is particularly popular and it might even be on sale. So check the link below this video and get started automating Excel and save yourself hours of time. But now what I'm going to do is to show you how to make this worksheet. So let's go to a new worksheet and build our custom threshold highlighting. Here we are with a blank spreadsheet, no special formatting, just a data. And we really only need to use three tricks, conditional formatting, a custom formula, and a checkbox. And the way that you want to set up your data is so we have one input for the value that you want to compare against your data set, one for the comparison operator, and then we're going to use a custom formula inside of conditional formatting. So let's go ahead and build that little formula right now because that's the special trick of this tutorial. Let's say that we want to compare 2000 with all of this, and this is our comparison operator. How do we do that? Well, it requires either going like this using ifs or a bunch of nested if statements if you're in an older version of Excel and then checking, hey, is this a greater than sign? Okay, then I want to check if this is greater than that. Is this a less than sign? Okay, then I want to check if this is less than that. And you would type out every one of the comparisons here. But we have a very special little trick right here. It's going to make our life much easier. Count if. And this will basically allow us to perform the check with a dynamic comparison operator without having to check which operator we're using. All you have to do is for the first argument range, click the cell that has the value that you want on the left side of the comparison. In this case, the very first cell of the data set. Then click your comparison operator cell, then ampersand, then what you want on the right side of that comparison operator. And this is our special formula. So if I hit enter right now, we can see that this is greater than 2000. What if I check if it is a less than? Zero for false. So one for true, zero for false. And that works perfectly when we need a true false output like we have right here. And uh, that's the trick. What you want on the left side of the comparison operator, your comparison operator, what you want on the right side. Now what that does mean is that you do not have to put a mount here on the left side of the comparison operator. When you're looking at this, it doesn't seem logical. You think, okay, I want to put the comparison operator over here on the left in front of a mount because that makes a little bit more sense. However, some people find when using this, it's a little bit easier to say it out loud. Okay, I want to look for the amount 2000. And then I want to find what is less than 2000. And that's why here it's set up that way. But you could switch the order and then make sure you have your countif formula updated correctly and everything will be good to go. Now, before we move on, we do need to make sure that we have dollar signs here for absolute cell references because we are going to be using conditional formatting, which means that we want this comparison to work for every cell in the data set here, but we don't want these two cells to change. So let's go to E2, click there, hit F4 for the dollar signs, and then D2, F4 for the dollar signs, or type them in. That means these guys won't change. C5 will change. And if you don't understand how conditional formatting works, it might be worth it to look into some of my other tutorials on that because it can get a little complex sometimes. But now that we have this, let's go ahead and add our little checkbox because we also want to be able to control if highlighting is going to be allowed or not. And that is a great little feature, very easy to do. So what I'm going to do right here is to take that guy 
and move it right here. We'll get to this formula in just a moment. And we want to go to the Developer tab. And if you don't have that, just right click up here, go to Customize the Ribbon. Under Main Tabs, check Developer. Hit OK. And then go to Developer tab, Insert, and Form Controls checkbox. And draw a little checkbox right here. We can click in here and type Highlight or whatever you would like. Then right click that guy, go to Format Control, and Cell Link in the Control tab. I want F1. So I type F1 in here. OK. Now let me pull it down just a little bit and click away. Click in here. And let's change the color of this cell. I forgot to remove that. So we see true when this is checked and false when it is unchecked. And we're going to use that to make this return true or false instead of zero. So what we want to do now is copy this guy. And for conditional formatting custom formulas like we're making, remember we need a formula that returns true or false. That's all we need. So what do we want to do? Simple little AND formula right here. And the first thing is to check F1 to see if this guy is checked or not. Then comma, and paste in our count if. Then close it up, and let's make sure we add dollar signs around F1 so that won't move. Then we can hit enter, and now we have a true and false. So we can check it out. Greater than, doesn't matter, doesn't change. What we need to do is to click highlight, then we get our true. Now I'm going to remove these two formulas. This guy, by the way, is what we just made. And what we want to do now is to make it so we can't see this. So click in here, Home tab, turn the text white. And you can put that cell wherever you want. You can hide the column, hide the row, do whatever you want to make it so the user can't accidentally easily hit it. But now what we want is to grab this big formula, copy that guy, and go to your upper leftmost cell of the data set. That's very important for conditional formatting. It can be very finicky. Select all the data that you would like to include in the highlight, then go to conditional formatting, then new rule. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. Paste that guy in there. Don't touch anything else. Hit format. Then let's go to fill. And how about we make it a nice little blue? OK. OK. There we go. And we can delete this formula because we no longer need it. I'm going to leave it in there for the downloadable file. So you can just copy paste it and test it out. But we don't need it now anymore. And we can uncheck highlight. No highlight. And there we go. Now the last thing that I want to show you is how to make this for a drop down menu. So it's a little bit more user friendly. We can use now any comparison operator we want in here. A less than. And just like that. You want to see if anything equals 2000. Just like that. And we have one cell right here. So you could type it in by hand or click this guy and hit Alt D L. Or go to data. And data validation. Then under allow go to a list and type in all of the comparison operators you want to be able to be input there from a drop down menu. No quotation marks, just greater than, comma, less than, comma, equal sign, make sure that's a comma, equal sign, comma, and then how about a less than or equal to, how about a greater than or equal to, and how about a not equal to. Hit OK. Now we've got a drop down menu. And how about not equal to? Go to view, remove grid lines, remove that guy, and there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's just a small part of what Excel can do to analyze your data and make your life much, much easier. If you'd like to learn more, check out our tutorials and our full courses on teachexcel.com. I'll put a link to those below this video. And the VBA course is definitely worth a look. It'll take you all the way from beginner to expert so that you can automate pretty much everything you're going to want to do in Excel. And it's going to save you hours of time. It might even be on sale, so check the links below this video, and I'll see you next week.